The atrocities of the Sino-Japanese War are often overlooked. The Nanking Massacre, occurring two years before the beginning of World War II, is perhaps one of the most brutal atrocities of the 20th century. Hundreds of thousands died at the hands of Japanese invaders who inflicted untold punishments on the Chinese civilians of Nanking. The city became a death camp, and no one was safe. Not women, the elderly, or even children. Among the numerous accounts of brutality, one stands out distinctly. The story of a Japanese soldier who envisioned himself as a noble samurai from an ancient era. In a disturbing show of cruelty, he beheaded more than 300 people in a vicious killing contest. The Sino-Japanese War, 1937 to 1945, despite being largely unknown, was one of the most brutal theaters of World War II. It was one of the bloodiest conflicts in human history, with around 25 million deaths, more than the total number of the deaths in Europe during World War II. Japan invaded Manchuria after staging a false flag event to justify their invasion. To legitimize the new regime, the deposed Chinese emperor was crowned emperor of Manchu Kuo. However, he was merely a puppet to the Japanese occupiers. China and Japan fought minor battles along the Manchu Kuo border before war finally erupted in July 1937, the beginning of World War II in Asia. The atrocities began before the Japanese reached Nanking. As they rampaged through the Chinese countryside, they were ordered to kill all captives, going from village to village, killing all its inhabitants. A journalist attached to the Japanese 10th Army claimed the army was so victorious due to the tacit consent among the officers and men that they could loot and assault as they wish. By December, the Japanese army had reached the city of Nanking. Chinese soldiers gave fierce resistance, but the city was captured within two weeks. The city was plunged into darkness, suffering through six weeks of torture, murder, and carnal abuse. The Nanking Massacre the Japanese soldiers were taught to feel only contempt for the Chinese, whom they viewed as racially inferior. The Japanese Empire believed it was the most civilized of all Asian races, and thus had the divine right to rule over all others. The disdain they held for the Chinese is exemplified by the words of Shiro Azuma, who openly admitted to his participation at Nanking. We were taught that we were a superior race, but the Chinese were not, so we held nothing but contempt for them. There were many assaults, and the women were always killed. When they were being assaulted, the women were human, but once the assault was finished, they became pig's flesh. The massacre began on December 13th, the day Japanese soldiers entered the city. Soldiers were given free reign to terrorize the Chinese civilians and captured soldiers, who were abused and murdered in the most horrific of ways. The slaughter began with mopping up operations, trying to locate and kill any soldiers remaining whether they were still fighting or not. These operations were nothing more than a massacre, as innocent men wearing civilian clothes were arrested and killed without investigation or trial. It is estimated that 4,000 died. What followed was six weeks of bloodshed and abuse. Over 200,000 died, and in the first month, over 20,000 women and girls, even the very young and old, were assaulted. Some academics believe as many as 80,000 assaults were committed during the six weeks of the massacre. There was no attempt from the Japanese officers to stop the violence. In fact, it was encouraged. They wished to destroy the will of the Chinese people to prevent them from ever challenging Japanese oppression. The first three weeks of the occupation were the bloodiest. The Japanese army carried out endless crimes, such as assault, murder, punishment, and arson. Only two days into the massacre on December 15th, American missionary Minnie Vautrin wrote in her diary, The Japanese have looted widely yesterday and today, have destroyed schools, have killed citizens and raped women. 1,000 disarmed Chinese soldiers, whom the International Committee hoped to save, were taken from them, and by this time are probably shot or bayoneted. Death could come at any time to the inhabitants of Nanking. Men and women were shot on the streets or torn from their homes and murdered in cold blood. There was absolutely no limit to what the Japanese soldiers could do. Mass graves were dug to accommodate the endless stream of bodies requiring disposal. Over 12,000 victims were buried in the 10,000 corpse ditch. 
a 300 meter by 5 meter trench grave. Chen Guangxuan was a young boy during the massacre. He was the only one in his village to avoid being executed by machine gun. His entire family, his neighbors, and everyone he knew in life were killed. He was spared as he had given the Japanese invaders two roosters and a small bag of potatoes. Violence. Every female in Japanese-occupied Nanking was at risk. The attacks on these women were especially sadistic. Some women were penetrated by broken glass bottles or even knives. Pregnant women were assaulted, and their unborn children were cut from their stomachs and shot, beaten, or bayoneted. The soldiers went street by street, door to door, searching for any Chinese female. Most women were killed following their assault, but some were taken captive and held in Japanese barracks holding hundreds of soldiers and assaulted multiple times a day. Women did all they could to make themselves unappealing to the invaders. Girls shaved their heads and dressed in men's clothes or dirtied their faces. Zhen Wenying was one of the young girls to hide their gender, living as a boy for the duration of the occupation. The Japanese soldiers were not convinced and forced her and some other girls in disguise to fight to see if they were really boys or not. The atrocities were used to humiliate the victims, some of the most atrocious including forcing sons to have intercourse with their mothers or the fathers with their own daughters as the family was forced to watch in horror and disgust. In some cases, religious monks who had taken vows of celibacy were forced to have intercourse. Some men were even forced to have intercourse with dead bodies. Illustrating the countless instances of violence, Takokoro Kozo, a Japanese soldier who took part in the event, said of the massacre, women suffered most, no matter how young or old, they all could not escape the fate of being assaulted. We sent out coal trucks to the city streets and villages to seize a lot of women, and then each of them was allocated to 15 to 20 soldiers for intercourse and abuse. 100 Man Killing Contest Toshiaki Mukai and Tsuyoshi Noda were two Japanese officers stationed in Nanking. The two officers had a competition between them to see who could be the first to kill 100 people with their katana. Japanese newspapers reported the contest. Both officers succeeded in reaching their goal, though they were unsure who had won. They decided to have a second round, this time aiming to kill 150. The Japanese newspaper, Nichi Nichi, ran the headline, Incredible Record, Behead 100 People, Mukai, 106, 105 Noda. Both second lieutenants go into extra innings. These men were depicted almost as noble samurai, like gallant knights slaying enemies in battle with their swords. Despite what was said in the newspaper reports, they were not rushing into the heat of battle sword in hand. A later newspaper article reads, when the two second lieutenants captured Zhuzhong City, they rushed to the front and fought bravely until the fall of the enemy. The two achieved a close match. Mukai killed 89 and Noda killed 78. This could not have been further from the truth. Most of those killed were POWs or civilians, unable to fight back. During his speech in his hometown, Noda himself said, I killed only four or five with sword in the real combat. After we captured an enemy trench, we'd tell them, Ni Lai Lai. The Chinese soldiers were stupid enough to come out of the trench towards us, one after another. We'd line them up and cut them down from one end to the other. The two men were arrested in 1947 by the U.S. Army and extradited to China. They were tried along Gunkichi Tanaka, who had killed over 300 POWs and civilians with his katana. All three were found guilty and executed by firing squad. Prisoners of War Chinese prisoners of war were afforded no rights. Those who were not killed on the spot were rounded up and murdered en masse, with hundreds of others. Machine guns, landmines, petrol, and bayonets were all used to kill large numbers of defenseless prisoners, whose bodies were then burned, buried in mass graves, or thrown into the Yangtze River. Foreign correspondents fed information about the massacre to the outside world, making sure the world was aware of what was happening in Nanking. They report seeing bodies piled six feet high and groups of hundreds of soldiers gunned down by machine gun fire, or bound men being executed with cannons. To locate the remaining Chinese soldiers within the city, the Japanese army had an amnesty, 
allowing soldiers to come forward and confess in exchange for being left unharmed. In one case, 200 soldiers confessed at once and were murdered instantly. After realizing they would be killed, soldiers ceased to come forward. In response, large groups of men who aroused suspicion were taken as supposed prisoners of war and executed. In one instance, 400 supposed Chinese soldiers were rounded up and executed. They were bound together in groups of 50 and marched off into an open area. Japanese riflemen and machine gunners opened fire, with the execution lasting 10 minutes. Japanese soldiers trampled over the bodies, shooting those still alive.